Once upon a time, you could walk into a local bank and be called by name. You could call by phone and have your call answered by a person. A message would be returned the same day. The decision makers were on site, not out of town. That kind of banking all seems so long ago, and yet a bank like that still exists. Providence Bank. Just good, solid local banking. Providence Bank. Come see for yourself. Good evening, I'm David Ferris, and thank you for joining us tonight on this week's edition of the Chamber Buzz. Our special guest tonight is Mr. Gary Hodges, who owns Sunset Studios here in Rocky Mount. Gary is the winner of this year's 2013 Rocky Mount Area Chamber of Commerce Small Business Person of the Year Award. Tonight's show is brought to you by Roger G. Taylor and Associates, and let's see what's going on in our area. We are, without a doubt, a small business friendly community. Rocky Mountain has taken businesses such as Cool Geeks, who's one of our sponsors tonight, um, Wires Inc., who is one of our monthly business winners, who've taken what has been the big box industries, the, the circuit cities and the Best Buys, who have left town, and they've filled the niche. They have filled a hole for service and provided jobs and created business and found success for themselves and then made Rocky Mount whole again in terms of those services. And small business is the engine that drives those services, especially in a community like Rocky Mount. So again, I tip my hat to the small businesses and small business owners out there who are providing the jobs and making our community stronger for it. So I thank you for that. Um, our monthly winners, and you've seen the list, you've seen the videos tonight, really are all winners. They've all had videos, and if you haven't seen Gene and Rogers do the videos, they. Gene has donated hours upon hours of her time to shoot the, the, the weekly buzz with the chamber and do the shows with the small business, small business of the month winner. Roger has kindly funded the financing of those with WHIG and they have put in many hours. Andrews behind the camera tonight has done a lot of that work as well. So we thank them for what they've done to help highlight the chamber and small business as well. Um, but these winners every month from, from Oakley Cotter to uh, Come around the room and see where people are. I don't know if I'll hit all of you, but I'm going to try real hard. From Oakley Collier to Calvin Davenport, who've been changing our landscape, changing our skyline, making a difference that you can see physically. Um, we have a photographer in the room who Bill Lennis did a really nice job of calling the next Charlie Killer group for Rocky Mountain. I think that's an accurate description. Um, we've got Bottoms Kyer, who is just a stalwart of our community. Who has not driven down May Drive over the last 25 years and not seen Bottoms Kyer? You know, it's just an icon, it's one of those legends in Rocky Mountain. We really appreciate what they've done for our community. Um, Simmons and Harris, again, who didn't see that video? If you didn't see that video from Simmons and Harris, what a great company with great employees. I, I could not be more impressed. I wasn't able to be there that day. And so I was able to watch the video and really impressed with it. With Metro Maintenance and Simmons and Harris, we just have some phenomenal businesses here in Rocky Mountain. They're all great. They all deserve to be the small business winner of the year. One of them just kind of stood out a little bit more. And when we had our meeting last month and we talked about it, we were like, well, you know, who's this and who's that and who does this and who's this, who does that? And two things kind of rose to the top. Their community involvement and their, their ability to adapt, overcome, and survive in economic times. Now, everybody who's in business today has survived in strong and hard economic times. So you're all a winner, you're all a success in that regard. But this winner has gone just a little bit further. Um, skip ahead here a little bit. Tonight's winner exemplifies both of these abilities to overcome and as a great partner to our community. In an industry that has changed significantly over the last 15 years, this business has adapted, found success, adapted again, and is now thriving. As a matter of fact, I just heard this business got another big contract out of a national client out of Texas. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> He's growing his business so strong that he's able to buy out his most recent partners and upgrade his equipment. And this business owner has given hours upon hours and hours of his time to help children learn, 
to donate to his time, to donate to children of modest means, to families of modest means, to help lift them up and show them a new world, a new horizon. Literally, in his plane, he has taken these kids up and shown them the world that they had never seen before. He's partnered with the community. He's a huge partner to the chamber. But if you've ever seen this man, he's always behind the scenes. He is always the one behind the scenes. You, you've seen his work, but you may have not ever seen him. Now, don't, don't get fooled by the guy. He may be tall, sometimes a little loud. He's very passionate about his Christianity and his politics. He'll get on a soapbox in a moment. But he's a good guy. He's a good partner to Rocky Mountain. His blooming voice and tall frame make sure he's heard and seen, but again, he's always behind the scenes. And he's the man with the behind the images. He's worked almost 2,000 weddings, and he's thrown, flown over thousands of miles, of frequent flyer miles, of his own hand, in his own plane. And, he's, and he is indeed a great friend to the people of Rocky Mountain and a great friend to the Chamber of Commerce. Please join me in welcoming my good friend, Gary Hodges, Sunset Studios, the 2013 Small Business of the Year winner. Thank you again for joining us and welcome back. Gary, first of all, congratulations. The Small Chamber Small Business Person of the Year Award is a very prestigious honor in our community and I can't think of anyone any more deserving than you for all you've given to Rocky Mount and with everywhere you go, if there's a civic event, it seems like you're there, camera in hand, clicking away, smiling, blending into the background and just doing an amazing job. And um, I'm, I'm so glad that you've been recognized for your hard work and, and what you've given to our community over the years. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. I can honestly uh, tell you that it was quite a shock. Uh, Tuesday night last week in receiving the award, uh, I was prepared to photograph somebody else as the winner and uh, the chamber had uh, gotten Jason Huff, who I have actually used as a backup photographer to come in behind me, uh, basically tapping me on the shoulder, uh, Gary, I need your camera. Get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, um, I was very humbled, David, and uh, very surprised. And uh, I love this community. And I've tried very hard to, hard to be a part of every aspect of it. Well, Gary, you, your, your love for the community and for the for the individuals within the community shows. I've, I've had the pleasure of knowing you for a long time and working around you and uh, even been on the other side of the lens, but um, you're, you're very gracious with how you handle situations and, and photographing civic events as an example of chamber events in particular. And it's just, um, your work is incredible. How, how do you feel like this is gonna impact you going, going ahead? Uh, as I get older, and uh, I've already received a call from one group wanting me to possibly serve on a board, and I see more involvement in the community. I see more getting involved in the back, the back room type operations of other things. And I really want, I have a plan, I can't disclose now, of bringing sure. uh, other photographers and downtown, I'll, I'll put that kind of, and, and doing training type things. Uh, and getting other photographers involved and giving them a place to where they can actually do hands-on training and things of that nature. And again, I want to give back to the community. That's a, that's a great idea. The history of Sunset Studios, how long, have you, how long have you been in business? I actually started Sunset Studios in 91, <clears throat> but my, my beginnings in photography go back to the soon-to-be birth of my first daughter, Amanda. And one Sunday, uh, I was at the time working for Duke Power in mm -hmm. computer operations, and one Sunday, looking at the paper or something, some magazine, here's a complete Yoshika camera system, and, and the flash is about as big as your thumbnail. And I told my wife, I said, well, you're exp we, need a, we need a decent camera to photograph this young girl. And I didn't, I didn't know anything about photography, zero. And uh, so I got that. 
And when I got all of this stuff, didn't know how to use it, so I, I dove into the books, contacted the local professionals and worried them to death, how do you do this and how do you do that? And uh, one hour photo had just started and there happened to be one a block from my, where I was staying. Right. And uh, so I go get a roll of film, there was no digital then, I get a roll of film, shoot, and go get it processed. And $20 later, well, I messed up there, I messed up there, that looks pretty good. And, and uh, so that's how it kind of got started. Trial and error. Trial and error. But going into the books and talking right. to professionals, because I knew that if I was going to really learn it, I had to talk to the people that had been doing it professionally. And so I worried them to death. Took my good ones to work, and a young man was getting married. And he said, Gary, I want you to be my wedding photographer. Well, I know all about computers, but I knew nothing about shooting a wedding. And he worried me and worried me, and I finally agreed. Then I got scared and went back and did some more trading. And to this day, that first wedding at the little church, the little chapel at Central Piedmont Community College, downtown Charlotte, uh, the inside, the wood was as almost black. It was so dark. It was 1790 yeah. type church. And to this day, it's probably still one of the best weddings I ever did because I was scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a terrific start. When, during your off time, let's just jump a little bit. When you've got free time, if there is such a thing in your life, what kind of hobbies do you enjoy? Deep sea fishing. Um, I deep sea fish a lot and photography and flying those uh so you still consider photography I, as much a hobby as, as a profession not as much today david as it used to be i used to just go out and just randomly photograph things right. uh i don't do as much as that and I, I i miss that because i'm so busy doing photography for you the chamber and everyone else that it consumes most of my time if i can say anything's truly a hobby today is uh and it's, and it's a business, it's going into more of a business too, and it's flying. I love, I love to fly. How'd you get interested in that? Uh, I wanted to go into the Air Force, and, uh, and, I, and this was at the height of the Vietnam War, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be a, a, what they call a jet jock, and just fly jets and, and, and be a, serve the country. But uh, I had a swimmer's ear, and the Air Force thought that would be uh, a negative, mm -hmm. so it kept me out of the Air Force, it kept me out of the Army, uh, but uh, I can take a plane and fall out of the sky three or four thousand feet a minute and I'm not bothered by the pressure differentials and I can do aerobatics and turns and all that stuff. All of those things that you see at air shows, that doesn't bother me a bit. Wow, what kind of plane do you fly? I have a Piper, uh, which is a low wing mm -hmm. uh, Cherokee, it has a 160 horsepower engine, so I can take myself and three adults and we can fly about 130 miles an hour. It's not the fastest out there, very stable, very forgiven. And if I can fly, you can fly. <laughs> but before we take a break in, in your flight, I've been the recipient of, of several of your pictures that are, you know, from, from taken from the air. How do you decide what you, what, how do you feel like, well, this looks good, this would be interesting to take a, a, a photograph of, and you're, I don't know how high you are elevation-wise when you make that decision or take the pictures, but how do you determine that? Uh, well, first of all, I do very little speculative aerial photography as far as just going out here like some companies and photograph 500 homes and then going back and try to sell images of home. Uh, more specifically, you've got a desire or a need as a business person to, for this piece of property, whether it's land, buildings, or a combination. And I start with looking at satellite imagery to determine the angle and the relation to the, is it a morning shot or is it an afternoon shot? And uh, altitude wise, typically we're about a thousand feet. Mm -hmm. And I've got two sets of cameras and two sets of lenses that will allow me to do a broad view or I can literally see the nail heads on top of the roof, one or the other. So, uh, and I will basically circle and uh, take multiple shots and give those to my clients and then they will pick the best pose. Right. Well, that's, that, I think that'd be a lot of fun to do that. I'd love to ride with you when you did that one time. I think that'd be, I think that'd be really fun. When we, um, when we return, we're going to, um, we're going to talk about maybe some of your, your favorite shots, if there is such an animal or uh, what you really get more excited about than, than others. 
So we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, and again, our special guest today is Gary Hodges, the latest award-winning Chamber Small Business of the Year recipient. And Gary owns Sunset Studios right here in Rocky Mount. Gary, let's talk about, you know, maybe some of the um, situations you've been in, if they're favorites or some that you just <coughs> wanted to pull your hair out. Um, you don't have to name names, but something that was kind of maybe unique or stands out good or challenging or whatever the case might be. Uh, I, th I mentioned just recently I photographed Nash Community College graduation. They had 260, mm -hmm. 70 graduates. And I had my camera set on a tripod and big flash and big batteries and, and walking across. And I mentioned so to someone just a month ago, they asked me, how was that? And I said, this is actually more stressful than photographing a huge country club wedding. And I think it had to do with the fact that you got several hundred people mm -hmm. at your back looking at you. Uh, the graduates are coming across the stage in five, 10, 15 second increments. And your word about, is the camera going to break? Is the flash going to mess up? Is the battery going to die? Or whatever the case may be. And uh, that's actually very stressful. Going back to, uh, I've done, uh, this past weekend, I photographed my 1963rd wedding, and also 1963 weddings. 1963. Golly. I'm trying to hit 2,000, David. I'd say you're gonna get there by the end of the. And summer. whoever that 2,000th bride is, it'll be free. I, I'm willing to do a little marketing <laughs> thing. <laughs> but uh, and she was, I think, also my oldest bride. Uh, she was 75, and oh, I cannot, uh, from a joy point of view, we we took her and a friend, uh, 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 sister I believe, out to Rose Hill and it was 95, seven degrees and very humid and uh, she was in her white gown and all dressed up. She acted like an 18 year old. Bless her heart. <laughs> and it was, it, it, was, it was actually very beautiful. Both of us were suffering from the heat and humidity, oh, especially sure. after I walked her around the, the property some. Uh, as far as stress, um, weddings, uh, yeah, the name's going to have to be, you know, a minute. I understand. I could write you a book on these weddings. Uh, the most beautiful things that I've seen, uh, some challenging things that I've seen. And I, in fact, uh, in all of those numbers of weddings I did, one girl, I photographed her wedding three times in five years. <laughs> so I could write you a book. So uh, uh, commercial work, uh, products, uh, it's, it's the pressure of the moment you know, where you've got to do a lot of perfect work, like these gentlemen videotaping right. this segment. You want everything to work and come together technically and do it in the timeline. That's where stress comes in. And uh, knowing how the camera works, knowing what the client wants, and, and making those two come together is very important. Well, I'm, I'm in awe of the many things you do like that, but. Um, you know, writing a book would probably be interesting. Uh, the names would have to be changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> well, I, I can understand that going back to the one that you, I think you said you photographed three times in five years. Maybe she's due to be the 2000th. She, she gets a volume <laughs> discount and gets it for free. <laughs> Photography, I like being in the background, David, and um, I really like to be behind the scenes uh, capturing it. Uh, I'm a what you see, what you get type of traditional photographer. I like to, if I can see it, I want to be able uh, to capture it, get in there and get out. You see me at events to go in and, and interrupt somebody talking. Let me get a picture of the three of you, the four of you, and get in and get out. And having equipment so that I can quickly get that image without having my, whoever I'm photographing, right. sit there and wait, 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 wait for the image to be taken. Well, you, you do that very nicely. Um, what, what do you see in your future? I see, quite honestly, working, I want to teach, I want to, I want to bring up the next crop of photographers and help. Charlie, Charlie Killebrew, I was alluded to being the next Charlie Killebrew, I'm very, I'm more humbled by that saying because 
Mr. Killebrew was a good friend and a good mentor, and he gave me a lot of uh, instructions, as well as Mr. Reed and uh, at Behringer's, and uh, helping the new crop of photographers getting started and getting, the whole business of photography has changed dramatically. And mm -hmm. everybody's got a digital camera, they can put it on automatic, and they think they're a great photographer, but there's more to it than just point and shoot. Oh, I, I, that I know. I'm, I'm, I have no claim to be anything but a horrible photographer. So bad that if we're taking pictures at home or something like that, Mary Ann's in charge of that. I don't, <laughs> I don't go there. Um, well, I, you know, I agreed with Bill Landis' statement about you and Charlie Kilbrew and, and Mr. Reed. I think, I think that's, you're, you're, in, you're in good company. Their, their little cluster of two has become three now. Charlie told me, he said, Gary, photograph every building, every street corner, go to every event, photograph everybody a thousand times. And he said, over time, you'll build a library of images that will become invaluable. And I've tried very hard to do that. I got in excess of two million images sitting on my computers right now of, of just the last 10 years of things that I've done. And I cannot tell you how many times people come to me, Gary, you know that job you did four years ago? I need picture X, Y, Z. And, uh, uh, and I have the ability of going and picking that out right now. That's, that's amazing. I know I've had to call you before, had the paper call and say, you need to call Gary and he'll, he'll dig one up or something like that. And that's correct. I've never, never thought about it. And you've also done some restoration for me personally, where you've taken some, I think we had an old photo of uh, our family's department store in Wilson called Ferris Department Store. And Uncle Charlie was giving away a, a little Nash Rambler back in 56. Yes. And it was in front for <coughs> Christmas. And then there was one of the, my, my dad and his three brothers, John and Robert and Charlie. And you know, you, you kind of brought life back to that. Uh, that's another thing that I get asked a lot to do, and that is uh, taking old images and uh, restoring them, bringing the life back, and doing Photoshop and adding or, or getting rid of all the bad stuff and, and bringing things back in. I just did a couple in the last couple of weeks, and when I showed the finished work to the person, he just, he was overcome. He could not believe it was about an 80 year old photograph. It was almost nothing there of an image. And it was almost like it had been taken yesterday. And he was tremendously pleased with it. And that's where my joy come in, is making my clients happy. Well, it, it, it's, again, it's an amazing talent. And I think our community in Rocky Mount is mighty lucky to have you here. And, and it's obvious that you do it your, your profession is as much from, from the heart and not as much a job as, as most people have to work with. I really love this town, David, and I love the, from the left to the right to the up and the down, I love the entire breadth of this city. Well, I think it's safe to say that Rocky Mount and Nash and Edgecombe County love Gary Hodge. Thank you. And Gary, again, congratulations on winning the Small Business of the Year Award from the Rocky Mount Area Chamber of Commerce. And thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us this evening. Thank you so much, David. I appreciate that. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us tonight. Once upon a time, a bank was a major part of the community. You knew the president and all of the bank officers, and they all lived in the local community with similar interests and a good quality of life. People made local deposits, and the bank turned those deposits into local loans. All in the town benefited. A bank like that still exists. Providence Bank. Not big, not pretentious, not greedy. Just good, solid local banking. Providence Bank. Come see for yourself.